Will Starlink solve Africa's internet problems? Right now, you're watching this video over an internet connection. Chances are, that connection is a terrestrial connection or a satellite connection. The difference between the two is that a terrestrial connection is delivered from points closest to you on the ground, while satellite connections are delivered from points closest to you from satellites over the ground. For years, most of the innovation in internet service delivery has been in terrestrial links, cable to optical fiber, 3G to 5G, and so on. However, the use of low earth orbit LEO, satellites to deliver high speed internet access is one of the most disruptive things to happen in the internet service delivery space in decades. And Starlink is one of the main disruptors. Now, for the satellite connections most commonly used today, the nearest point I was talking about is at least 36,000 kilometers away. LEO satellites, on the other hand, operate from 500 kilometers to 2,000 kilometers above the Earth. Since LEOs are closer to the Earth, they cover less territory. Think about it like the difference between the beam of a torchlight that's close to the ground and the beam of one that's farther away. To cover the same expanse on the ground, you typically need several torchlights close to the ground to do the job of one that's farther away. In a similar vein, you'd need thousands of smaller LEO satellites to work together and operate effectively as one traditional satellite would. That's how LEO satellite constellations work. Arguably, the most popular LEO solution in the world is SpaceX's Starlink, and that's largely due to the charismatic founder Elon Musk. But as with many things concerning Musk, it's important to distill the reality from the hype. First, the hype. 1. Starlink isn't the solution to internet censorship. While it is technically possible for the satellite company to bypass government-mandated internet bans, Starlink cannot operate in any country without a license from the regulator. And since the regulators are typically the ones to notify operators of the bans, this will present an interesting dilemma for Starlink in the future. 2. Starlink isn't cheap. The kit costs $499, while users pay $99 monthly. This immediately puts it out of the reach of most African users. This analysis found that, in South Africa, Starlink is more expensive than 5G and fiber links. 3. As a result of this high price point, Starlink will not kill consumer ISPs. Rather, it is small organizations and the smaller branches of big organizations that are likely to get connected. To be honest, if any ISP should be worried, it should be enterprise ISPs. 4. Starlink isn't ready yet. It is still in beta, with 10,000 participants, and it's obvious that SpaceX still has some work to do. The website downdetector.com, which tracks service outages, lists four disruptions to its service as of July 2021. 5. Starlink faces a coverage dilemma. The company has advertised that its target is rural areas and underserved communities. But, especially in Africa, it's hard to square that target market with affordability. Now that we've gone over the hype, here's the real. 1. Starlink is fast. It has advertised speeds of 150 Mbps download. But there are reports that the number is actually closer to 78 Mbps. Either way, that's a massive improvement to the capacities that most Africans are able to have in their homes and offices. But the real censure is number two, the latency. Because LEOs are stationed so low to the ground, they cut down the time it takes for your message to reach the internet and back. That's typically referred to as latency. On traditional satellite connections, latency is usually 650 milliseconds, possibly even more. Starlink users will experience latencies of less than 40 milliseconds. Remarkably, that's less than a third of the latency that users of a terrestrial link in, say, Cape Town would experience. What this means is that all your audio and video activities can happen in real time or damn near. Starlink 
should be available in South Africa and Nigeria in late 2021 to 2022.